Hi, this is Jason Whittle, and in this video you'll be learning how to sketch graphs of various functions that have been transformed. So right now on the screen you can see the graph of g of x equals x squared. What we're going to do to this graph is change certain parameters so that the graph is going to be transformed. So this is the equation that is being displayed right now. What we're going to do is change all these values. This value over here we're going to call a, so at the moment a is equal to 1. You can see that from the slider as well, a equals e is equal to 1. n is equal to 1, c right now is equal to 0, and b is equal to 0. We are changing the parameters when it's written in a certain form for a very particular reason and that is because we can see the transformations much more easily. So let's increase the value of A. You can see that the graph is being dilated. Now if I decrease the value of A less than 1, you can see that it's dilating the other way. Now if I let it equal negative 1, these two graphs look very similar. In fact, they are the same, just reflected along the x-axis. So when A is negative, it's just a reflection of the graph if A were positive in the x-axis. Let's go back to that. Let's make, let's have a, let's make A 2. Have a look at what x squared was, the value of g of x. Um, it is 4 when x was 2. Now it is, after that transformation, it is now 8. So from 4 to 8, that's, a, that's multiplying by 2. So that's actually what a does. I'm going to make a 0.5. Let's have a look what the x squared had. So it had 4, now it's got, after the transformation, it's 2. So it's like all those, the y coordinates, or the t's, it's just being divided by 2 or multiplied by 0 0.5. So that's what the value a does. As I said before, if it's negative, there's just a reflection in the x-axis. Let's go on to n. I'm going to increase the value of n. It looks it looks like it does something very similar to increasing the value of a. So you can see n is increasing here. Note that n is actually being squared as well. So we get x, add whatever the value of c is, multiply by 1.2 and then square it. So that's the difference between n and a. Uh, one of the big differences is that n is actually inside the function. Now I'm going to make it's more, it does something very similar to A. Now I'm going to make it negative. Now this is interesting. Before we saw a reflection in the x-axis, but now I'm going to make N negative 1, and you cannot tell the difference at all from the graph of Y equals X squared and Y equals negative X squared. And that's because when the value of N is negative, it reflects it in the Y-axis. And for this graph, it is symmetrical about the y-axis, so when you reflect it, you can't tell the difference at all. I'm going to put n back to 1. Let's have a look what the value of c does. I'm going to increase that. So note that c is actually being squared as well. X is, you add c to x, multiply it by n, and then square it. So you can see that as I'm increasing c, it's moving to the left. So what you need to know about C is that it moves it moves the whole it just translates the whole graph horizontally but in the opposite direction of the sign of C. So here's C is positive 4.2 but it's moved negative 4.2 on the horizontal axis. I'm going to put that so when I make it negative it moves in the positive direction. Let me make that one again. Let's have a look what B does. So I'm going to inc increase B, and you can see that the graph is being translated up. When I decrease B, it's being translated down. So the graph is not being dilated at all, it's just being translated. So moved up, down by whatever the value of B is. 
and it moves in the same direction as the sine. Let me make C zero again so you can see that. There you go. So when it's four, you can see that it's just been moved up by four. Okay, let's have a look at a different graph. So here we have the graph of, so in green, you've got the graph of y equals the square root of x. Once I change this to one and one, yep, so y equals the square root of x. And now we're gonna look at what the changing all those parameters do again. You'll notice that again, you get x added to c multiplied by n, and we put all of that inside the function. But instead of being a squared function, this time we have a square root function. We then multiply that function by a, and then after doing that, you add b. So it's a similar process, and you'll see that they have the exact same effect. n has the same effect as in the last graph, and so does a and c, as well as b. So what you need to do, if you remember the, the general graph, like y equals the square root of x and y equals x squared, all these other numbers, if you put it into the same sort of form, you can just transform the graph. You can figure out where its vertex is by, from the values of C and B. It's moved, these just move that vertex up and across. And these values, A and N, just dilate the graph. So if you want to have a read of how to actually, well, the exact language relating to the dilations, reflections, and translations, I recommend that you pause the video now and have a read of this document I've created. Note that the dilations are just magnitude. When it's got, when we have a negative, it's just they cause reflections for those two values that dilate. Okay, we'll go back to our square root graph, and let's have a look at another one. So here we have a hyperbola, and just notice where the a, n, c, and b are. If you can remember where they go then you'll be able to sketch any graph. Really, you can just remember this here. So the f is not an, a, a variable that we can change, or it's not transforming the graph. That's the type of function. So we had everything in these brackets here squared for our first graph, and then we had everything in these brackets the, that were being, or we're taking the square root of that. So that f just represents the type of function for this sort of form. And it works with all sorts of graphs. So I'm just going to show you this one. You can see the values are increasing horizontally, vertically, sorry. Um, this is what n does. So when you're asking yourself, what does n do? I recommend that you actually look at where n is in the function and then ask yourself, what's that going to do to the value of the vertical coordinate or the y coordinate? So here, if you increase the value of n, you're dividing by a bigger number. And you can see that as you're increasing the value of n, those y coordinates are getting smaller. So put that back to 1. Actually, I won't bother. Let's go to another graph. We've got the truncus. And what I recommend you do, instead of watching me do it, actually go to this GeoGebra book and play with it yourself. See where the values of A, N, and C, and B are. Change the values, see what it does to it. See what it does to the graph. I've, I've made all these ones so far and they're available free on the internet. Here we have the exponential function. If you want to find these on the internet, all you need to do is put in the URL that you can see here. Just put that into your browser and then you'll have a GeoGebra book come up and you'll be able to access each of these, change these values and see how it transforms your graph. Here's a, here's a good one. Here's a logarithmic function. So the green one is log to the base 2 of x. Um, the interesting thing about this one is that we can actually change the value of the base of the logarithm. So that's not in 
um, it's neither the value of the base of the logarithm is neither a n c or b it's something different but you can see what it does with this app I have created you can see that a does a very similar thing note with this one what a does when we had a positive value on the vertical axis for our original graph for log to the base 2 of x you get a bigger positive value but when you have a negative value you get a bigger negative value so that happens as you increase the value of a again you can see that when a is negative it reflects when n is negative wait a sec, okay, that's one and causes that reflection in the y-axis as you can see here equal negative one and you can also have a go at doing these with sine cos and tan functions um, to turn them on and off you just use these buttons here so it's a sine function cos function and tangent function so I'll just quickly increase the values of a change the values of n, c, and b you can see what those do and finally um, if you're up for it uh, here we have transformations of fractional power functions so it's just a x to the power of a certain fraction and you can see what that does and you can see sort of weird things happening as you are changing the value of z here uh, anyway um, have a go with this just play it's, um, it's the funnest way to learn in my opinion so have a go at these have a look at how they change the graphs and you'll be able to sketch graphs of various functions that have been transformed once you have a play of this and do a few textbook problems thanks for listening